Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. I'm here with Bruce with North Star Games. We're going to be talking about whatever the heck we want to talk about, I guess. Absolutely. What I also know we're getting real broadcaster. Yeah, yeah. We're so, getting real broadcaster. I'm ready to wrestling promo if I need to, brother. I try. I try my best. I got all the fancy equipment. We're ready to go, I, I think. We're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So what do we have to talk about? We got a lot of we stuff here. We have so much stuff to talk about. Okay, so first of all, at this show being premiered, Dirty Pig. Okay. Uh, Dirty Pig, it was a game called Drexel in Germany. Uh, we brought it over. It is the newest in our line of Happy Planet games. In this game, uh, you are a pig. Or you actually, you have pigs. You have three pigs. Oh, wow, that's rude. I know. You're not, you're not actually a pig. Okay. This is actually a pig. Oh, okay. You have pigs. They are clean. They're unhappy. You want to get them dirty? Whole goal of the game is to get your pigs dirty. Okay. Uh, what you will find is is the most efficient way to clean pigs is to call for a rainstorm. And you are not only an agrarian, you are a weather wizard, so you can do it. Pigs hate this. They hate it when it happens. So they have learned that they can go into a barn. They go into a barn, the rain can't get them. But you might want to clean them because you win the game by getting all of your pigs dirty. So if somebody else gets their pigs dirty, okay, you so want to clean, clean their pigs. I'll say you so want then, the pigs dirty, right? Yeah, yeah okay. you can go into the barn and clean their pig. Pigs hate this. So they have learned how to do just like real basic engineering and home improvement. And they will put a door in the barn. They put wow. a door in the barn, they're dirty, you can't get in there. However, you are, as we have established, a weather wizard. So you can just hit their barn with lightning and burn their barn down. Pigs hate this. And as we have talked about, they have learned basic engineering and basic home improvement. So they will put a lightning rod on top of the barn so that you can't do that. If you have a pig in a barn with a door and a lightning rod, you cannot clean that pig. It's very protected. It's, it's a very protected It's protected so pig. protected. Uh, however, you don't need to do all that. All you need to do is get your pigs dirty and you win the game. Okay. Yeah, it's that simple. You, like you have a three it. card hand, you play one card, you draw one card every turn. No. If you don't like your hand, you can get rid of as many cards as you want. And that's it. That's the whole game. Plays in about 10 minutes, plays two to six players. And this is in the same line as Happy Salmon and, and Monster, Monster Match, Match and, and Funky, Funky Chicken. Chicken. And yeah, it's in that same thing. It's got Happy Little Guy with a Happy Little Game inside of it. Happy Planet. Cool. Just make it again. How many uh, it plays two to six, just two like almost six. all of them. That works. Some play three to six, and some plays two is to six. Is there going to be like a secondary, like, Purple pig that makes you play it more players? So I'm not sure. I'm gonna say right now no, okay. but if you would have asked me several years ago there's gonna be a second happy salmon, I would have said no. Mm. So who knows? Maybe purple pig's coming. Yep. I just made the game name. Just yeah. There. Just there. Purple pig. So here's an interesting thing while Dirty we're talking. Purple pigs. While we're just talking, yeah. the amount of people that sat in a room and had a discussion about whether to call this game Dirty Pig or Filthy Pig, and we were like, well, Dirty Pig's dirty. Yeah. So let's come up with a less dirty name. What about Filthy Pig? We're like, that, that sounds worse. dirtier. That's worse. That sounds dirtier than Dirty Pig. And that's how we end up with Dirty Pig as the name, because we're like, Filthy Pig just sounds like, just sounds like real bad. <laughs> so Dirty Pig it is. Well, both sound all right. This is more family friendly. This is very, family but, but friendly. But we couldn't believe it. Like, so like, that's just a one word change that is essentially a synonym. Yep. But when I say it, you're like, oh, you can't call a game you're going to play with kids Filthy Pig. That's... That's inappropriate. You filthy animal. Yeah, you're like, I don't know why it's inappropriate, but we all know that it is. Yeah, fair enough. Yep. Dirty Pig, the card game. And this is already out. This is already out. This is go. live at this show and should be very soon at your local retailer, your friendly local game store. Uh, talk to them about it. If they say, what are you talking about? Make them go in their system and find it. I know they can get it. And it is available. Find some dirty pigs. Find some dirty pigs. <laughs> Not to be confused, don't tell them to find some dirty pigs, you filthy pigs. That, that would not be appropriate. Yeah, and okay. don't ask them for a game called Filthy Pig. It may exist, you may or may not want to play it. It's probably not a family game. Yeah, I would, I would, doubt, I would doubt that. We have more. Oh, we have, more. we have so much more. So next, Woods and Wagers, it's Vegas, baby. All right. So this, this is, is different than the Vegas one. There's a Vegas one, right? There's the Vegas one. Okay. So the Vegas one is a big giant mat. Okay. And it was North Star Games just making the coolest thing we could. Yep. Let's make the mat three feet long. Yep. Let's make it two feet high. Make it out of neoprene good enough for a wetsuit. Yep. Uh, what's it going to cost? Doesn't matter. Just <laughs> make it. Make it so cool. Can we ship it anywhere? No, it's in a real big tube, kind of hard to ship. Oh, okay, cool. Uh -huh. So because of that, we decided to make a version that's easier for like aunts and uncles and, and sort of like non-gamer folks Makes to get. Makes it easier for people to buy. Exactly. We're still going to have the big mat at shows. You're yep. still going to be able to find it at our conventions. But we realize just moving it around is real tough to do. Yep. So we're going to have this version that's going to be in Target. It is a Target exclusive. It will be on the floor at oh, Gen Con. fancy. Indeed. It'll be on the floor at Gen Con and premiering at Target the exact same time. Cool. So if you're not at Gen Con, if you're at Gen Cant and you want to get in, on your hot, sweet Gen Con action. Go to your local Target or Target.com, 
pick this up. I'm going to show you one thing I really love because we really doubled down on the Vegas aesthetic. Not so, to be confused with that double down from the Colonel Sanders. Yeah, no, Ooh. you're talking about the KFC wow. double down yeah. where they took out the bread and they just made the bread chicken. Yeah, yeah. They were like, wait a minute, let's take, we have a chicken sandwich, but I don't want, <laughs> I want the bread to be chicken. Well, then what are we going to put in the middle? More chicken. But how are we going to be able to tell the bread from the chicken? Also put bacon. That'll do it. Yeah, no, bad idea, bad idea. Okay, so not that double down. Not that double down. Ooh, they they, don't, that they double. don't sell that anymore, by the way. No, do they not? I no. thought they were still on that. No, no, no. I, I, that's like, it's like diabetes right there. In a, in a, uh, I mean, I like it. Good. It was delicious. It's not good. He's <laughs> delicious. As, as a big guy, I can say, it's not, it's not how you should live your life. Much <laughs> as Cookie Monster would say, yeah. double down is sometimes food, kids. <laughs> double down is sometimes food. Uh, so, the is, Vegas, okay, what's Vegas? so the Vegas aesthetic on these is really, really cool. The cards actually look yeah. like casino cards. And then they have all of this stuff here, mm. which is super cool. The chips look like chips out of a casino. And if you remember the mats, the were closed mats, and now kind of have sort of a sexy pink look to them now. Because it's Vegas, baby. It is Vegas, baby. Yeah, right. uh, and then we have the smaller. You'll definitely recognize this is not the mat from the other version. It's a little different. It's a little different, it's and, different. and it's a little more it's, reasonable. It's family reasonable size. It's family reasonable, yeah. target reasonable size. It's got felt still. It's felt. Feels Vegas -y. Yeah, it feels like Vegas-y. Uh, so we have that, that is available. Once again, it will be at Target. If you did Villainous last year, so like Villainous, you could buy it at Target on the way to Gen Con and then show it to people while they fought each other for it. You can do the same thing with this this year. Nice. Okay. So that is uh, Wits and Wagers. It's Vegas, baby. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about, well, first, I've never played Quacks of uh, Quedlinburg. What is, what is wrong with you? So I know there's an ex expansion, and uh, yeah. I definitely haven't tried that one either. So there sure I is. guess we'll start with that one before the expansion, which kind of makes more sense, at least for me, because I haven't I haven't you played it. Quacks? Yeah, that one. The game that won the Kenner Spiel. Yeah, that one. One of the biggest hits of last year. Uh huh. Jamie Stegmeier called it his favorite game. Who's that? Uh, of... of <laughs> Jamie Stegmeier of Stonemeyer Games, uh, the makers of Scythe. I don't, I don't Is that know. also a game you haven't played? Nope. I okay, haven't. cool. I, Jamie's giving me other stuff, just not that one. Okay, well, there you go. Well, <laughs> that guy declared it best game of the year last year, I think. He at least said he liked it. I, people have told me that. So, okay. I saw the video. He liked it very much. Good. Uh, it also won the Kenner Spiel. Yep. It also won uh, BGG Family Game of the Year, Golden Geek. Mm. Uh, it's also up for best new designer for the Dice Tower Awards. Um, it's also just really awesome, and it's a fantastic mix of Blackjack and Dominion. So there, there's Quacks. Everybody already knows about Quacks. Except they for me. I don't know about Quacks. I don't know. Tell him. Tell him about Quacks. <laughs> I'm not wasting any more of your time. Let me know in the comments. I guess I don't know. So basically, it's okay is what I've heard. Okay. It's very, and if by okay, you mean amazing. And I can't believe that you are a content maker in this industry uh, and that you have not played Quacks of Quidlinburg. I've heard of it. <laughs> I know it exists. That, well, I mean, at least you've heard of it. Yeah. Thank goodness. What's this? <laughs> von, von, von Quedlingberg? Yes. Die... Die Kraut Okay. Uh, so when it, comes here, that is. when it comes here for Gen Con, it's going to be the Herb Witches. Okay. So we've added this. Fifth player? Got it. We have a fifth player now. Nice. Uh, hey. You know, when I play the game, Bruce, and I say it as if you know me personally, when I play the game, Bruce, I always go off the edge of my spoon. What are you going to do about that? I'm going to add on an overflow bowl. So now all of your extra stuff that goes off, you can score points with all of your extra chips that go beyond the edge of the handle. Which is a good thing, right? Which is a good thing, exactly. I was about to say, I was actually going to say, <laughs> just so you know, that is a good thing. Uh, we Additionally, we have new books for uh, all of our different... Uh, Elements all over different parts of the potion, which yep. is which is also good. Good. It's variety. It's more yeah. variety. More so things it, is always it's more, good. More things, more right? things is good things. Uh, we also have loco weed, which just just looking at you, man, I think is you know that, that's good. Is, yeah, I mean that sounds. Hey, maybe, maybe I know it's good. Yeah, loco it weed. sounds like you probably think that's probably all right. Yeah, yeah. So loco weed <laughs> has no value on the chip. All the other chips you can see have values on them. Yeah. Loco weed doesn't. Loco weed's power is that it does things based on other parts of the loco weed it's seen. So for instance, there's a catch-up mechanism so it's not in this game. how many you have is how much, how powerful it is then? It, how powerful it is is based on how many you have. Oh, okay. So one <laughs> side of it literally is, for every one of them you put in your, uh, in your pot. Oh, in your pot. In your pot. 
Okay. Yeah, you're putting okay. your local okay. weed in your pot. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For everyone you put in, it's worth as many as have already been put in. Okay. So the first one's worth one, the second one's worth two, the third one's worth three. So it's about building an engine with them of as many as possible because they become more powerful as you bring more out. Nice. The other side of the board is uh, there's a catch-up mechanism in the game. Catch-up mechanisms are when in a game uh, they build something to try to make it so that the last place is closer to the first place. Okay. And in this game, it's rat tails. Yep. Which is just why. I mean, I have heard of a catch-up mechanic, though, I promise. I just wanted to check. <laughs> I have. I didn't want to miss any I, part of this. I'm like, wait, wait a second. I, I know I, what that is. I didn't want to start it and you'd be like, what are you talking uh -huh. about? Uh -huh. So oh, I, just, I had to do that. <laughs> um, so in this, it's uh, rat tails. These actually reward you for the number of rat tails. So if you're furthest back, these are more powerful for you. Okay. And then they're going to help get you to the lead, and then they become powerless because you're leading the game. So if you're not doing well, these will help you these catch up. These are awesome. Good. Yes. Yes. Uh, also, this will mean literally nothing to you. Okay. I'm and ready. I don't expect it. I'm, to. I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to be excited pumpkins. anyway. Six pumpkin jaw. Oh wow. So many pumpkins. Wow. Such pumpkin. That's so. So pumpkin. That's a thing. I get. I get. I don't. It is. It is yeah. definitely a thing. People really want it. Yeah. People really want the thing. Like, look. Look how excited they are. Six pumpkins. Not five. No. No. We're not messing around here. Good. We're not taking a nap in Dusseldorf. We're not sleeping in Cologne. We're working. A new knob, a new gear. I'm guessing so, is that because there wasn't pumpkins previously? No, there or were pumpkins, but there were only one pumpkins. And now there are six pumpkins. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I got you. Uh, so that's also... I understand the, the pain. It's a also, very important thing. Also, anybody out there, if you realize that was a Muppet movie reference, thank you. Just find me and talk to me because that I never get to do a good Muppet movie reference and I appreciate it. Uh, final thing that's in this are the herb witches that it's named after. There are three witches. Uh, one is a copper penny. One is a silver penny. One is a gold penny. There are four of each witch. What's, how do you say the name on there? Uh, um, call face. Wow, well, well done, yes. Yeah. Uh, Vertsing face. Uh, sink punked face. Sink punk. Sink punked face. <laughs> Am I being punked? Leer, leer dicing butel. Pro buntum, two or four or und six or chip. Oh, so all this is actually in German. Yeah, no, this still. is yeah, no, this is this is German. It's gonna yeah. be in English. We have translated it. We've worked through it to make sure it's all clean and all the German English is English English, uh, which takes a long time to do, and we're really proud of the work that we've done on it. Um, but essentially, you get three pennies, and it'll let you kind of cheat three times during the game, where a witch will help you with something that you normally wouldn't be able to do. So like maybe if your pot overflows, you can spend a penny, and you can still do all the stuff you could always do. In this game, if you overflow you only get like part of the end of your turn oh. but this witch will let you take your whole turn oh yeah at a cost uh the witch penny okay and the witch penny is only worth a point a piece at the end of the game so they're made they really Better want you to use them, them. exactly okay. exactly well so usually witches aren't very nice but in this game they are and one neat thing i'll show you and because it's visual and has nothing to do with gameplay yeah. you'll it will impact you as much as it does anyone else okay so I'm if you ready. look quacks coolenberg box the witches are like five feet in front of the scene. Yeah. Oh, fancy. Yeah. I like that. That's so cool. Who, yep. who, did, who thought of that? Uh, so somebody, uh, somebody, German? somebody German. Somebody German. Somebody German. Somebody German thought of that and was brilliant. I'm like, oh, that's probably not a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but I'll try but, to field it best I can. That was good. That was yeah. good. I, yeah. I like that. I appreciate the response. Yeah. Okay. So we have those. Um, next, I'm just going to show you real quick. That it exists. This is our work in progress. Oceans. I want it. I believe. Have we, I want have it. we done oceans? I'm, have you and I talked about oceans before? Yes. Okay. Yes. I so want then, it. Yeah, and, I want it. And you will make that happen. I really this want it. This will be coming out in fourth quarter. Um, it is right now as we speak. It is on backer kit. If you want to get a copy, it is still available. You'll still get all the stuff you get if you back the Kickstarter. Um, I think until the end of June, early July. So if you want to check that out, it's oceans on backer kit. Um, I can't remember. I think the address is like backerkit.com/oceans. Watch this. Watch. I did it. No, thank you. Thank you for checking that because I don't remember what it is, so I appreciate no, that. No, no, it's already there now. Though. Good. <laughs> it's it's here. Yep. Check it out. Yep. On on backer kit. Yep. Um. So, it's good. It's so, it's gonna it's be good. So good. Mm. If you like if, if you like any of the stuff from North Star, those are those are so good. Yeah, if you like the evolution game, uh, it's really kind of a weird mix of. The basic understanding of it is almost as simple as the beginning, but the complexity of what the cards do makes it our most gamerly game that we've made. It has a basic set of sort of starting uh, cards uh, that's 11 or 12 traits that look like all the rest of the games that we've made. Uh, they're beautifully balanced, they're tournament ready, and then there's also a stack of 100 new cards called The Deep that just all do different crazy things. There's one that's draconic where you breathe like water fire. 
there's the Kraken, the Leviathan, all kinds of stuff. There's that little like shrimp that moves its arms so fast that it boils the water in front of it and kills things. Now is there that one little weird fish with the little antenna that comes out from the really far Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 the angler fish? Yeah, the angler fish is in the game. That's not in, is it? Yeah, okay. I forget, it's called like, like bioluminescent lore. Okay. But it's literally like his little like dangly bit that yes. draws people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So all kinds of cool stuff in there. Cool. The, uh, the, the surface covers what we know of the known ocean. Yeah. The deep covers some of what we know some of what we don't know, and some of which we are pretty sure is mere fantasy. Or not. Or not. I mean, the Kraken might be out there, the Hydra might be real, but we're not going to tell you it is, because we make sci- we've made some science-based stuff here. Yeah. We don't want to lie to you. But it might be. But it might be. I'm not, he- I'm not here to tell you. You believe what you want. It, whatever. You, you, do, you do you, boo-boo. You do you. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's some interesting things down there that we haven't seen before. And as a matter of fact, like, we have found that as we're going along, we're like, we made something that we thought was a completely fanciful trait, and then we learn it actually Is does exist thing? somewhere. And we're like, oh, shoot, that's a real thing. Cool. We'll check that one off. Yep. And then the final thing to show you. The Die Tavernen im Tiffenthal. Uh, uh? Yeah, C. C. Oh. Uh, the Taverns of Tiffenthal is what we're going to be calling it. Tiffenthal will be one word instead of two. It means deep valley on this box in German, but Tiffenthal is an actual part of Germany. Okay. So we thought it makes sense. Quacks of Quillenburg, uh, Taverns of Tiffenthal. Awesome. Uh, this is the next Wolfgang Larsch. It is a mix of a deck builder, yes. a dice draft, okay, and a, an engine builder. That's my game. Yeah. Those are the three things I really, really like. If my audience knows dice builders I like, deck building I like, and I really like engine builders. That's my favorite mechanic, is an engine builder. Well, I'm going to show you here real quick, right right fast here. And this is, this is a prototype, so to speak. No, this is, this is the, we are translating the German English into English English, so right. this is it's an easy a, to understand game. Oh, so okay. this will be out fourth quarter. What you're looking at is what you will see in the game. Uh, but you literally, this is your player board. You build this little tavern. There's your little house ale and your cash box and like, one drunk monk that hangs out at your bar, and that's your vault, and a dishwasher, and uh, this is your brewer that brings you beer, and this is a puppy dog that once you upgrade and you get yourself a server, the puppy dog has nowhere to lay anymore, and a barrel house. So essentially you start the game, you're gonna do it with a card draft where you start filling up your tables. They're gonna give you people that you can serve, they're gonna give you people that work for you and stuff that's in your bar. And then you do a dice draft where you place your dice on the different things to get money so that you can, oh my word, it went crazy. Oh, bring it back, bring it back. Double click the thing, double, double click it. We're so done. Double click the thing. Oh, double click it, oh my word. Come on, double click it good. Double click it, double click it harder. She's gonna, she's, she's, it's beautiful, there you go. There we go, oh my, oh no. Come back, come back, we're here. Okay. Oh, oh no! Hold it! Oh no! Don't. Okay, we got it. We got. I got this. There we go. We're good. We're good. Oh my word! Are uh, we all right? I'll Are just, you all right? I'll just. I'll just. Leave Are it. you all right? Is everybody okay? That guy just looked at you really weird. That's <laughs> funny. He's okay. <laughs> we can tell that guy's all right. Uh huh. So <sighs> what's really neat about this is so you have sort of the currency, the Thaler currency that you use to upgrade your bar. Yeah. Buy, get new employees, buy new stuff. Yeah. Then you have beer currency that brings more people into your bar. Well, why wouldn't so, it? Exactly. So it's this engine building of making the place better to make beer, to get better people, yeah. to come in in a better place that you use their money to improve, to get more beer, to get more people. So you're just building this engine. That making goes more along. and more beer? Yes. Nice. So that you can get more and more money so you can upgrade your bar. So things that people do in real life. Exactly. Okay. So this is sort of like Diner Dash, but every time I say that to people, they don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like Diner Dash. So like, if you take a look, literally, when you upgrade the, the table area, it turns you over, flip you it over things. and you have another table. With oh. that, you also get a special person called a noble. Yep. Nobles give you 10 points at the end of the game. Yep. So every time you upgrade, you get 10 points. If you can get a bunch of beer, you can buy nobles and they give you 10 points at the end of the game. Yep. So what you're really trying to do is like, do this thing to get the nobles to come to the bar and you're trying to get as many points as possible through that uh, dice drafting, engine building, deck building thing. Cool. Yep. I like yeah. it. And that'll be coming out fourth quarter. We are not tying that to a show necessarily. So, so if we get it in, bef- if we get it in before PAX Unplugged, then we're just going to put it out. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. So that is that is the pipeline for North Star. So uh, once again, Dirty Pig out now. Go to your local store. Tell them you want a Dirty Pig. Then tell them it's a game, and they'll stop looking at you funny. Uh, Wits and Wagers, once again, will be at the same time Gen Con, it'll be in Target. 
uh, Quacks of Quidlinburg will be at Gen Con and should be at your local game store very shortly after. Oceans and the Taverns of Tithendal will be coming in the fourth quarter. And if they want to know where to find all this stuff again? Oh my goodness. If you want to know where to find it, go all over social media to North Star Games. Go to NorthStarGames.com, which can that be put down here or is that too much work? No, I got it. Okay, we can put no, that. Just go here. Go here and it, it would be wonderful. Uh, talk to us on Board Game Geek. We're sometimes on there. Uh, we, we have a little bit of a presence on YouTube. We sometimes answer some things there. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and... Uh, if, a lot of places. Yeah, we're a whole... We're so many places. Come talk to us. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. We're there to help. And if you want to check out the games, once again, NorthStarGames.com. Beautiful. Yep. Well done. That was, Thank you. you got, your voice is dying, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, it's, Slowly. It's hard, it's hard, but I'm fighting through. Because for you, I'm going to fight through this. Oh, that, Tomorrow, I'm not going to be able to. I'm glad Every, you got a Friday Everybody else is going to be just going to be like, this is the next game. And then I got a game out of pig. Uh, I can't even imagine if you have a game and a pig, that your whole response is like, uh, I got a game and a pig. Well, anyway, it's been a pleasure. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. I know you, I know you got so more. I know, you're, I know you got more. You're going to be going crazy today. Oh, I'm sure. indeed, indeed, indeed. But thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see both of you, uh, to see you come by, to talk. This is always wonderful. And I thank you so much for giving me the time. You're welcome. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie Wright here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio, with Crystal Lee from Yellow. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? How's uh, it going here so far? It's going well. We just started, so we can't <laughs> wait for all of the awesome turnout. Awesome. So I'm really excited to see what Yellow has to share today, uh, you know, this week at Origins. Can you tell us a little bit about what's new and upcoming and what people will be really excited about? Yeah, so um, right now we do have our Kanagawa Yokai and Bunny Kingdom. Um, those came out recently. Uh, what's coming out in the future, we have Ishtar, Gardens of Babylon. It is a uh, tile placement, territory control, um, plant trees to gain victory points, use your little assistants to control your properties, and... Oh, these are cool. These are cool, too. Yeah, those are the fountains. Uh, the fountains will look a little bit differently in the final product. We're going to pre-release for August in Gen Con, and then a final release at Essen. Uh, then we have Double Rumble, which is our newest 8-bit box game. Um, it's a fighting game where you're taking over, evil people have taken over the city with mob bosses and you and your fighters are working together to defeat them all. Awesome, and then what's over here? There's even more games. <laughs> yes, so we have um, our Ninja Academy. You and your teammates are ninjas in the academy and you are competing in duels and trials against each other to see who is the best ninja of them all. So this is a smaller game, it looks like, like yes. a more of a quick pace, dexterity game. party game. Dexterity, ooh, okay. Yeah, so um, some of the uh, fun t trials are each opponent will have one meeple in their hand, and you'll have to throw it up and catch it, and then you'll keep adding meeples until someone drops all at least one of them. <laughs> oh no, I feel like that would be hard to do in my left hand. I'm actually right-handed, but yeah, <laughs> we could do that <laughs> later. Okay, and what's last over here? Lastly, we have Little Town. Little Town is a tile placement, um, control resources, uh, worker placement game that you basically forest your resources, wood, wheat, um, stone and water to build little communities and little towns <laughs> to gain victory points. Oh, awesome. So it's kind of like some of those bigger like world building and development games, but at a smaller scale? Yes, yes. It's great for uh, the younger generation to try and build up their gaming um, repertoire. <laughs> sort of <laughs> get, get ease into it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for showing uh, us what's all here at Yellow. It's, so Ishtar is the one that'll be coming out soon. But if people want to like go online and see more about it, where where can we go to see more about all these games? Do you have a website? 
Uh, so yellowsale.com is our U.S. version of uh, our French parent company, Yellow, and that's where you can get a great description of all the games and then purchase and go from there. And you can also purchase here at this con or Gen you're going to be at Gen Con as well, right? Yes, we will be at Gen Con and Essen. So um, you can purchase all of our already out games here and then Gen Con we have pre-releases and future games to come. Awesome. Well, Crystal Lee, I'm super curious to learn maybe how you got into board games or what really excites you about board games. Um, I love the competitive nature of it and all of the different types of board games there are. You learn different skills. It allows you to just basically have fun with all your friends at the end of the day. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was really great talking to you and meeting you. You as well. And I hope to see you around the con. So definitely, definitely. That's all we got for you guys. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Callie Wright from Unfiltered Gamer, and I'm here with some special guests today. First, we have Aaron Gukowski from One Board Family. Hi, Aaron. Hi, thanks for having us. Yes, and also Rachel Blasky from 524 Lab, maker of the Mint Tin game. Yes, thank you. So how is Origins going for you guys? It's going wonderful. We've got to meet a lot of awesome people and see a lot of wonderful games. Awesome, and you Rachel? Oh my gosh, running all the time, meeting so many, so many cool people. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, I love the mint delivery games. I've uh, played a few of them. Erin, you have too. What do you think? Yes, we love them. My husband and I play it often, so we love it. Yeah. Awesome. And then, Rachel, you have something new to share with us. What it is? What is it? <laughs> I'm really excited because this was ready right before Origins, Origins and it, we have it here. It is the first mint tin game that's going to come not from the original designer justin blasky it's going to come from the the makers of design sorry dinosaur island we've got uh john gilmore and brian lewis that have done this design um we are now a cooperative it'll be mint cooperative coming out this is going to be in september to kickstarter and what we have here is all of the mint world that you are familiar with from mint delivery uh is now under attack by villainy no. i know right <laughs> we've got superheroes because there you always have to have superheroes especially in minton because that just needs to happen so everybody has their own abilities that they are going to be working with um as superheroes do and their specialty is going to help them to protect mintopia from these villains and when you have a mint universe, you have dental demons. So, <laughs> you are going to be fighting against Nick O.T., Gorillic, and the big boss, Ginger Vitus. Ginger Vitus. I know. I love the puns. The puns are amazing. So, what you're doing is, uh, as uh, you are playing the game, these villains are going to cause trouble. And so what you do is you put, turn over this trouble card and it's a standard layout and it shows that this right here is Cinnamon Center under attack for three mints. And when you remove those mints, you're shown two panic points. Your standard panic starts at five, so that's gonna increase by a couple. And if you get to 26, that means that the villains have won and you all have bad breath. And it's game over then, Exactly, right? okay. so you're going to roll dice on your turns to replace the mints. You can ha put one back or two back. You can run by changing a location and adding a mint. You can fly by adding a couple. Ooh. I know who you have to fly you're a superhero and you can do all these other things all the way up to having using specials against them so you roll a six and nicotine will reduce regional panic by three so you use that special against him really awesome. excited it's gonna be so much fun everybody loves the theme everybody loves uh, the hero names are just as cool as the, the villains. We've got General Gumdrop, Citizen Cinemite. I think there's Super Spear for the green player, and that yeah. just makes me think of a pickle every time. So amazing. How many players is it? It is one to four, 
and uh, we're going to keep working on those higher player counts for maybe a special project coming up. For maybe a, a giant tin? Or maybe something uncooperative. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, super exciting, super excited to see the Mint kind of universe and world growing. What do you think, Erin? I love the idea of the cooperative, mm -hmm. and I love that it fit, still fits into such a small container. That's awesome. Yes. You can take it around everywhere with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. This is great. Under our mint delivery. So um, one of the cool things that I really think is awesome about a cooperative is I hear a lot of non-gamers, they, they don't want to do something that's competitive. They want yeah. to come in yes. and like my mom, her favorite is Flashpoint Rescue because they're working together. They're going to go save everybody from the fire and she doesn't feel like she has to beat anybody. And I think yeah. it's going to be a really approachable, amazing representative for the hobby. It's also great for kids, right, to learn yes. from different types of games, cooperation, teamwork. Yes. teamwork. Together, yeah. yeah. So if people are interested in learning more about Mint Cooperative, where should they go? Well, 524labs.com, I set up a page so that we can grab your email and I can send something out if you uh, want to be notified when we launch. Um, I have plenty of social media going on on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and it will keep you up to date, I promise. Awesome. And then One Board Family, do you want to shout out anything for there where people can find out more about you guys? Oh, yes. You can visit us at OneBoardFamily.com and find us on Instagram and Facebook and, yeah, everywhere. We have a podcast, too. So, yeah. It's Lots of content. Yeah. Awesome. This is Callie Wright from Unfiltered Gamer at Origins. Thank you, guys. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time.